we have good indications that inclusive education at the end leads also to a more inclusive society. Because if you learn from the beginning that some people are different, but have the same skills and competences and can achieve the same targets is an asset for everyone. It's not only to develop knowledge and skills in the school, it's also social development, which is as important as the knowledge. And that's the reason why we can see how important it is to include children. Not only for those who have special needs, but also for those who, let's say, are ordinary kids in the class. They learn also from that we are different. It is about how do we cope with diversity and how can we celebrate diversity between people. Special needs, it also includes children from minority backgrounds, children who have language issues or disadvantaged children. There is actually a shift from the beginning of the work of the agency compared to where we are now. In the beginning, specialist policy makers, experts were discussing what inclusive education is and why it is needed. Now we move into the phase, how do we implement inclusive education? Our agency is in collaboration with our member countries trying to find out which barriers exist to prevent inclusive education and, and what we can do to improve in order to achieve more inclusive education. It is a human rights issue. They have to have access and equal opportunities in order to achieve the same jobs, schools, education programs as every other person. One of our latest areas of work is focused on how can we raise achievement of all children. We bring researchers and practitioners together in professional learning communities. This is a very promising project and the outcomes of it are very useful, I think, for policy makers in the long term. Not so long ago, we have developed a profile for the inclusive teacher which describes the attitudes, the skills, the competences and the views teachers should have in order to be an inclusive teacher. There are a few explanations for the discrepancy between what policymakers want and what practitioners do. One of these is, is related, for instance, to the financial area, the incentive structure that is within regulations and laws. What I would like to see is that laws go hand in hand with financial regulations. Students with disabilities, looking back at a school career, said, we want inclusive education as early as possible because there we learn the skills, the competences and the attitudes which we need later on in further education and on the labour market and in society in general. So the earlier inclusive education, the better. I'm very proud of the fact that some of our findings are being implemented in policy and also in practice. We have numerous examples of countries that changed policies or adapted new policies based on the outcomes of our work in the past years, which makes a change for the daily life of school children. We turn now slowly the matrix down and give countries, individual countries, feedback on where they are in the process of inclusive education based on the information that we have already from our projects. All of our projects consist of extensive country reports about the specific area, which we use so far to conclude the general insights or the general outcomes for that area. But now we give countries feedback based on all the thematic areas, information we have in the house, and give countries sort of a mirror where they are in terms of the progress to inclusive education.